Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And in this video, we are looking at the ESS. This is a space station add-on that I downloaded. And I have it in orbit around the moon. I thought what I would do in this video... Welcome to Station ESS. Some ambient sounds there. I thought what I would do in this video would be to take off from Brighton Beach and I'm going to use the standard Delta glider and get into orbit and rendezvous with the ESS. I'm going to use uh, Transex to do this and this is going to be pretty similar to my rendezvousing with the ISS using Transex video that I did and I'll actually provide a link to that in the uh, description down below but I think that by doing uh, another video and using a different orbital body, you know, in this case the moon, and having a different target, that uh, there might be a chance for people to learn some new things that might not necessarily have been obvious in the other video. Basically, the more examples you see of things, the easier it is to understand how it works. So let's uh, jump inside the flight deck of the Delta Glider and get going. First thing I'm going to do is bring up Map MFD and target the ESS to find out where in the heck it is in its orbit around the moon. Bring up the display parameters, change that to orbit plane, and hit OK. So obviously this is my location here at Brighton Beach and this yellow line is the orbital path of the ESS around the moon. Now on Earth we have basically two opportunities per day to take off and rendezvous with the ISS and that's because the Earth rotates uh, relatively quickly, you know, 24 hours. So basically every 12 hours we have an opportunity to take off and rendezvous with the ISS, either going north or, there, or then 12 hours later we could go south. The moon on the other hand rotates quite slowly. It takes about 27.85 Earth days, I believe it is, to rotate one time. So instead of having multiple opportunities per day to take off and rendezvous with the ESS. We actually only have uh, like one opportunity every 14 days. So right now it's uh, Sunday, August 19th, 2012, which by the way is the date that I'm recording this video. And all I can do is fast forward time until I have a better opportunity to take off and get into orbit, you know, the launch window. And that's going to be when this yellow line crosses over top of my location. So let me show you what I mean. Let me just press T a few times. You can see the ESS going around. And if I press T again, before you let me zoom in on my location, you'll see this yellow line starting to track closer to my location. And I want to take off when the yellow line is exactly over to overhead. <clears throat> to eliminate some of the guesswork because it become it's not very scientific to sit here and look at lines crossing over top of other lines and using that as our indicator. So what we can do to add a bit of precision is use launch MFD and this does not come with orbiter by default. It's an add-on that you need to download but I do recommend it if you do any type of rendezvousing with any space station. This is very handy, at least for this one purpose alone. When I target the ESS, target selected. it tells me that the time to intersection is 136,000 seconds. So there's no ambiguity there at all. I know exactly to the second when this line is going to be straight over top of me. And it also gives me an exact heading that I need when I take off and get into orbit. 
in this case it's 20.30 degrees and this may change by some fraction of a percent as it gets closer but basically 20 and a half degrees so I'm just going to press T a few times to bring down the time to intersection and what I'll mention also is when you're on Earth you want to take off when the time to intersection is about 300 seconds and the reason for that is because it takes about 300 seconds to reach half of your orbital velocity for Earth. Now we're on the moon, we're not on Earth obviously, so it doesn't take us 300 seconds to reach orbital velocity around the moon. So the question is, how long does it take? Well, um, I don't know, to be honest. Off the top of my head at least. But if we bring up burn time calculator, uh, if we switch over to manual, I do know that orbital velocity around the moon is about 1600 meters a second, give or take. So half of that obviously is 800. So how long does it take to reach 800 meters a second? Well, according to burn time calculator, about 60 seconds. It's a pretty good number. So we'll remember that, we'll remember 60 seconds. But we don't but we the time to intersection is when we need to be going in that direction, you know, putting applying our main engines. But I have to take off, rotate, and then head out. So I'm gonna add, and I'm just guessing, I'm gonna add about 40 extra seconds to that number. So 60 seconds to reach half orbital velocity plus just 40 seconds, and that's just a random number I'm coming up with, to take off off the landing pad and rotate and then head out. So I'll show you what I mean. So let's accelerate time, get closer to, you know, the time to intersection. And there's something else I'll mention. When we get really close to the time to intersection, this number here, this northern number, it will start changing rapidly. When that happens, just ignore it this is the number that we want, this 20.3 figure, this is what we want to go with. Uh, I believe basically when the line gets right overhead it just becomes very hypersensitive and this number just starts shifting all over the place. So when that happens we'll just ignore it. Warping time ahead, getting close to the time to intersection. Backing off a little bit so we don't overshoot. We're down to 8,000 seconds. Down to 5,000. Backing off again so we don't overshoot. Down to 500 seconds. So the number I came up with was 60 seconds. I'm adding 40 seconds to that. So when the time to intersection is 100 seconds, I'm going to take off and go to 20.3 degrees. Okay, here we go, in five seconds. Okay, applying some hover. And I'll immediately press L. That way the vessel doesn't tilt this way or pitch. And we press F1, we can look outside. G to raise the landing gear. And I need to start rotating right away. So get over to that 20 and a half figure. About right there, maybe. About right there. Now immediately full main engines. Turn off the level horizon. Pitch up just a little bit. And now I can turn off the hover engines. Once I'm headed toward orbit, I don't need these MFDs anymore. So I'm going to bring up something more useful. A line plane. I'm going to target the ESS. And orbit. I'm going to watch here for my vertical speed. I don't really want to let it become a negative number. But I also want to watch my rate. Make sure that my relative inclination is coming down. Again, pitching up a little bit to prevent the uh, 
vertical speed from dropping to negative. And I'm going to yaw a little bit to the left. Bring that rate down faster. Pitch up a little bit. And... Wow, we got really lucky. Got a rate of 0.00. .00. If I can actually hold that all the way to orbit, that'd be nice. Couldn't pitch up a little bit. Now I only need an apoapsis of about 20 or 25 kilometers. It doesn't need to be very high. And as I get close to orbital velocity, I'm going to back off the main engines. Trying to watch that rate. It's very sensitive when you're this close to zero. Go ahead and pitch all the way down now to level. Okay, back off the main engines. Very close to orbital velocity. You can see this extending around. So looking for about 20 kilometers. We'll go with we'll go with that. Uh, now this was a little bit of dumb luck actually. Generally you have some amount of plane alignment to do after you get into orbit, but this proves that you can in fact get a perfect relative inclination if you time everything just right. So we don't need to worry about getting to the ascending node or the descending node, that job is done. But we do need to think about circularizing the orbit, and that's going to be in 1,500 seconds. Uh, before I warp time ahead, let's just bring up the ESS as the target, so we can see where we are versus where the ESS is at. So here we are, the ESS is here, we have to catch up to it, so we're below the ESS. We can see that the altitude is uh, 80 kilometers for the periapsis and 80 kilometers for the apoapsis. So if we stay fairly low here, like 20 kilometers, we should catch up to it pretty quickly because we'll have a shorter trip around the moon than the ESS does. So let's go ahead and switch over to orbit, um, the orbit HUD, and again I like to be in the prograde position, and I'm just going to warp time ahead to the apoapsis, so I can circularize my orbit, so that's uh, 1,300 seconds. Getting close to that point, let's go prograde. And the main engines of the standard delta glider are very powerful. So I can get the time to apoapsis all the way down to just like one or two seconds. And let's go with that. And here in just a couple seconds we'll engage the main engines. And as this starts to creep up, back off the engines a little bit, and wait till it gets closer to zero. We'll do a little more circularizing, and we'll go with that. Okay, now we are in perfect alignment with the ESS, and we are uh, we have a circular orbit. So now if I just warp time ahead by, you know, a factor of a hundred or a thousand, I'll go around and catch up to the ESS, and eventually I'll, I'll pass it. And I don't want to pass it, I want to rendezvous with it. So what I'm going to do to help me determine how many orbits I need to go around before I do any more burns to uh, raise my orbit 
to get up to that 80 kilometer level. I'm going to bring up Transx. And I'm going to select Transx. And the first thing I'm going to do, actually, because I always forget to do this, I'm going to switch over to uh, Ships and then Plus, and then type in ESS before I make this nice and large. Because what I always do is I make my MFD large, and then when you hit Plus Plus, it brings up that dialog box, and it's behind the MFD, so you can't get to it. So then I have to resize it back down. So this time I remember to do it first, okay. Now, uh, this view of TransX isn't very good for helping us set up a rendezvous because the orbital paths of the vessels are, um, you know, tilted. It's like sideways or sort of this, almost like a 3D view and it doesn't work very well for this purpose. So I'm going to go through in view setup, I'm going to go through the variables and come over here to graph projection. And I'm just going to press plus plus until I find the one that works best. In this case, it's focus, but if you go through them, there's maneuver, plan, ecliptic, and in this case, focus is best. Now, what I'm going to do is set up a maneuver. So come over to view maneuver, turn maneuver mode on. Before I go through the variables, or before I make any adjustments, let's take a look and understand what we have. The gray inner circle is the surface of the moon. The green circle above it is my orbital path around the moon. And finally, this blue circle is the orbital path of the ESS around the moon. Now, I am below the ESS on both sides of my orbit. See, my periapsis is 20 kilometers and my apoapsis is also 20 kilometers. So this means I absolutely must apply a little bit of prograde velocity to raise my orbit. What can be the case is that you will have half of your orbit above the target object and half of your orbit below the target object. Suppose my periapsis was 20 kilometers and my apoapsis was 120 kilometers. That would mean half my orbit would be below the ESS and the other half would be above it. So then the question becomes, do I raise my orbit or do I lower it? Well, the answer is it depends. If you need to raise your periapsis to rendezvous with the ESS, then you would raise, uh, you would apply positive prograde velocity. But if you're trying to bring down your apoapsis to uh, the altitude of the ESS, then you would apply negative prograde velocity. So it can actually be a little confusing if you have a tilted orbit like that. So it's a little bit easier at least from an understanding point, if you have your orbit below the target on both sides or opposite. If you have your orbit above the target object on both sides. If it's above the target object on both sides, then you definitely have to apply negative prograde velocity to lower your orbit to the target. Does that make sense? Basically, if you have half your orbit on one side and half the other, then it becomes a little more difficult to do this. At any rate, let's uh, switch over to an alter setting. And what I need to do is just apply, let me go actually super, some prograde velocity here. And you can see what's happening is that this dashed yellow line is getting farther out you know, between my orbit and the orbit of the ESS. So this is where, this is what will actually happen if I were to apply 6.225 worth of delta V. This would be my new orbital path. So let's think about this. If we did something crazy like this, and let's say that that was actually 
bringing my closest approach down, which it's not, but let's say it was, you would see that, you know, this is still not a good idea because it's sending me way out into space or vice versa. If we were to do this, then you can see that maybe over here, you know, yes, my closest approach is coming down, but look, my new orbital path is below the surface of the moon. So it doesn't do me any good to have, you know, a low closest approach if I'm crashing into the moon as a result. So let's reset this. And what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of prograde. And the first thing I want to do is bring this dashed yellow line out until it touches roughly the altitude of the SS. And right now, I'm not even paying attention to the closest approach. I'll deal with that in a minute. But I can see here, this dashed yellow line is now getting really close to the orbital altitude of the ESS. I'm going to say about right there. Now the question becomes, when do I do this burn? If I were to do the burn right now, I would still be off by a thousand kilometers, and that's not going to work. So I'm going to come over here to the date variable. And we can see that this date is in the past. Because as soon as we turn maneuver mode on, it sets the date to then, and with each second that goes by, the state becomes more obsolete. So the first thing we need to do at the very least is reset it to right now, but we can't do the burn the very same second, so we need to move it out into the future a little bit. So now what I'm doing is I'm just looking how far out into the future that I need to do this burn in order to have a low closest approach. So I'm going to go around. That's one orbit. You can see now I'm down to 500 kilometers. Keep going. And basically, in less than two orbits, I have a closest approach of two kilometers. And let me see if I can get any closer just by using the date. That's down to 500 meters. That's incredibly close. That's down to 155 meters. Okay, right there is the best spot. So now I'm going to do a little bit of additional refinement with the prograde. Go all the way down to hyper. Okay, and I can see that by using a little bit of extra prograde, it's going to bring that closest approach even lower. And remember, we want to dock with the ESS eventually, so we want to touch it. We want to be, you know, we want our closest approach, in this case, to basically be zero. Or close to it. I mean, it won't be exactly zero, but as close to zero as we can get. You know, that's good. Anything a couple hundred meters or less is fine. So now I'm going to press VW to bring up view target. And there's one thing I'll mention about this burn though, is that this is 12,000 seconds into the future. That's far enough ahead that by the time I get to that point, this maneuver that I set up probably won't be as accurate as it is right now. Because you can see with each passing second, these numbers are changing. So let me just show you what I mean. Let's go to view target and let's warp time ahead until the begin to the begin burn is down to just a thousand seconds. Let's go with that. Now we're 1,300 seconds away from the time to do this burn. But now when we come over here to view setup, we see that the closest approach is showing 
348 meters instead of you know 20 meters obviously this is fine but what can happen is that this will end up being two three four five or even ten kilometers off by the time you get to the point that you want to do the burn so if we slow things down at this point when we're just a thousand seconds away what we can do is come back over to view maneuver and do a little bit of additional refinement before we actually do the burn so here if I take away a little bit of prograde you can see that closest approach is coming down and this is going to be more accurate than if I were to just do the burn based on the previous settings the closer we get to the time to burn the more accurate this number becomes okay so we brought that down enough now let's go back over to target and get closer and just to see if this changes at all I'll look at it again when we're at 500 seconds let's go with that and it's still about 145 meters so it's not going to change much at this point but what I wanted to emphasize there is when you set burns up really far in the future you know 10,000 seconds uh, 30,000 seconds into the future then by the time you actually get to the point of doing the burn there will be enough variations in the calculations that you'll probably want to do a little bit of refinement you don't absolutely have to you can always just do a second burn but at any rate let's go to view target and get ready to do this burn here in 500 seconds the scenic way around on that rotation. Okay. Now that we've got the uh, green X lined up, go ahead and warp time ahead to get closer to the time to do that burn. And notice how low our delta V is. You know, we're only doing 14.37 uh, worth of velocity change. It's very low. It's going to use, you know, almost no fuel. It's very, it's a very small amount, and that's what you want. If you find out that you're doing, you know, a, th a thousand worth of delta v or something crazy, then something's gone tragically wrong, and you need to reset your uh, setup and start over. We're about two minutes away, but we are at 10x, so that won't take long. Getting close to time to begin the burn, so go back to real time and straighten out that green X. Okay, go ahead and warp time ahead. And we'll go with that. We're going to do the burn in five seconds. And burning. Translation. Okay, we've got the delta V down to zero point zero zero one. So we'll come over to VW maneuver, view maneuver, turn that off, and we can see we're going to be 15 meters away from the ESS when we get to it. And our encounter date is 56162.4580. So it looks like 
we're not going to go around. We're just going to rendezvous right at this point in less than a half orbit. So let's close out this MFD and get ready to rendezvous. We're going to press Control I and bring up the not the spaceport but the vessel and what I want to know is the frequency for the transponder that's the long range transponder it's 13220 and then we'll put in the frequency for the first available docking collar and that's 113.45 okay we'll close that out bring up the docking MFD and change over the HUD to the docking HUD now I'm 142 kilometers away and we were going to rendezvous here at this point so let's warp time ahead to get closer to that time and you can see our closest approach is increasing a little bit but we're still you know basically when within a stone's throw of the ESS by the time we get over there and we're also going to have a very uh, you know relatively slow approach my difference in velocity at this point is less than 30 meters per second and I hate to sound like a broken record but the Delta glider engines are very powerful so we'll be able to eliminate that difference in velocity with no problem in fact it's so low that we can even use the reverse thrusters and I'll show how that works let's get in closer Okay, um, get him closer. Okay, now that I'm within two kilometers, rotation. let's rotate around and look at it. Now normally what I would do, and I'll show you, would be to rotate so that I have my vessel pointing to the negative velocity vector. That's back here. I would line it up just like this and then when I got really close to the uh, vessel I would use the main engines to eliminate this difference in velocity but since this is such a small amount of velocity difference I can just use the retro engines by facing forward and that gives me the added benefit of being able to see where I'm going and I get but this is only possible because the difference in velocity is so low. So I'm going to come down here, open the retro doors, and I'm going to line up the vessel with the positive velocity vector, get it right in the center, there it is. And if we don't know how long this will take to eliminate this difference, we can use burn time calculator to help us figure it out change the engine to the retro and we're saying we want to eliminate 16.57 using the retro engines and according to burn time calculator we can do that with a distance of just 47 meters I'm not going to wait till I'm that close but we can wait toward just 500 meters or so closing in and we'll go with that let's get a little closer I'll go with that
Transportation. Translation. <clears throat> okay, so there we have it. We're 321 meters away from the ESS. And our difference in velocity is basically zero. Rotation. Translation. Now it's zero. Now obviously all I've got to do to rendezvous, or rather dock, is just switch over the nav to nav 2 and I can press HUD to bring up the docking corridor and move the vessel in there and move on in but docking the actual docking procedure is pretty straightforward I think most people understand how that part works I think the actual rendezvous is a little bit more difficult it's what tends to throw people off so that's all I wanted to show in this video um, hopefully this additional example gives more information, more insight into how this process works. Um, at some point in the future, I'll probably do even another video, same concept, but again, just more examples uh, helps explain how everything works. It's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment. See you next time. The ISS using Transex video that I did, and I'll actually provide a link to that in the uh, description down below but I think that by doing uh, another video and using a different orbital body you know, in this case the moon and having a different target that uh, there might be a chance for people to learn some new things that might not necessarily have been obvious in the other video basically the more examples you see of things, the easier it is to understand how it works. So let's uh, jump inside the flight deck of the Delta Glider and get going. First thing I'm going to do... Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And in this video we are looking at the ESS. This is a space station add-on that I downloaded and I have it in orbit around the moon. thought what I would do in this video Welcome to Station ESS. some ambient sounds there I thought what I would do in this video would be to take off from Brighton Beach and I'm going to use the standard Delta Glider and get into orbit and rendezvous with the ESS I'm going to use uh, Transex to do this and this is going to be pretty similar to my rendezvousing with and all I can do is fast forward time until I have a better opportunity to take off and get into orbit you know the launch window and that's going to be when this yellow line crosses over top of my location so let me show you what I mean let me just press T a few times you can see the ESS going around and if I press T again, before you let me zoom in on my location, you'll see this yellow line starting to track closer to my location. And I want to take off when the yellow line is exactly over to overhead. <clears throat> to eliminate some of the guesswork, because it is bring up map MFD and target the ESS to find out where in the heck it is in its orbit around the moon. Bring up the display parameters, change that to orbit plane, and hit OK. So obviously this is my location here at Brighton Beach, and this yellow line is the orbital path of the ESS around the moon. Now on Earth, 
we have basically two opportunities per day to take off and rendezvous with the ISS. And that's because the Earth rotates uh, relatively quickly, you know, 24 hours. So basically every 12 hours we have an opportunity to take off and rendezvous with the ISS, either going north or, there, or then 12 hours later we could go south. The moon on the other hand rotates quite slowly. It takes about 27.85 Earth days, I believe it is, to rotate one time. So instead of having multiple opportunities per day to take off and rendezvous with the ESS, we actually only have uh, like one opportunity every 14 days. So right now it's uh, Sunday, August 19th, 2012, which by the way is the date that I'm recording this video. 